Assalamu alaikum student this is our second lecture for the week 1 so previously we have discussed a simple vapor compression refrigeration system all its components and how does it work and we did an example numerical on that one so now we are moving on to a multi pressure system a system which has uh, not just one pressure between not just two pressure that is one condenser pressure and one evaporation evaporator pressure but now it will have one condenser pressure and maybe two or, or maybe more evaporator pressure so it's called multi pressure system so the simple vapor compression system that has been dealt with is a two pressure system one low side pressure which is the evaporation evaporator pressure and one high side pressure which is the condenser pressure the performance of a single stage system shows that these systems are adequate as long as the temperature difference between the evaporator and the condenser, which is called temperature lift, is small. That is around minus 15 degrees generally to minus 15 degree to minus 25 degree centigrade is the temperature that they can produce, the lowest temperature it can produce. But what if, if we need um, a, a higher temperature lift? That is, uh, temperature lift of the range of minus 40 degree or um, or maybe in a chemical industry where cry cryogenic uh, is being produced or liquefaction of gases is required where the temperature required the lower temperature required maybe minus 150 degrees centigrade then how can we utilize this vapor compression system or what modification we have to make it to achieve such a, a large temperature lift in it and there are also uh, cases where we just don't need uh, uh, one lower temperature but we need more than one lower temperature for example in a dairy industry you will need one evaporator to work at minus 35 degrees centigrade to make the ice cream or uh, to harden the ice cream and another evaporator to operate at 2 degree centigrade to cool the milk <coughs> So ideally this can be achieved by employing two independent system which is however not desirable because of the higher cost, higher initial cost. As the temperature lift increases the single stage system becomes inefficient and impractical. How it is inefficient I want to explain you that one. So here I have a, a, a simple vapor compression system with by just I'm, I'm just modifying the evaporator pressure in it and how it changes. So if you look at this, there is two diagram on, on your screen right now. One is the temperature entropy diagram, another one is the pressure enthalpy diagram. So we want to discuss the effect of decreasing evaporator temperature on uh, evaporator temperature on the performance of your refrigeration cycle. So it can be seen from the TS diagram that for a given condenser temperature, the component condenser temperature we are keeping it same, just changing the evaporator temperature. As the evaporator temperature decreases, throttling loss will increase. So as we are lowering the evaporator temperature, we are lowering the evaporator pressure basically. So it's a, um, the throttling loss will increase. Be before we had the cooling capacity or the cooling produced is 1 to 4. Now it is 1 to 4 dash. So it has been reduced. If you look at the area under 4 to 1 or 4 dash to 1 dash, you can see the 4 dash to 1 dash area under, under this line, the area has reduced. So the cooling uh, produced by this one is reduced. And then if we go further down, there will be further throttling loss. So it will be reducing. So that's one of the loss. The superheat loss increase on the compressor side, if you look it up before, at state 1, it has to compress from here to point 2. But if we lower the evaporator pressure, now it has to go from a lower pressure to a much higher pressure. So a much higher temperature it has to go. And then this heat has to be rejected in the kitchen environment before it comes to the saturation and then, in the and, and then it will be losing this much heat. So the initially we have to, the compressor <coughs> has to work, we have to supply the compressor extra energy to compress it and then we have to the energy we have supplied to compression now we have to waste it because we have we don't need this extra heat that we get. So there is a um, super heat loss increase also. The compressor discharge temperature increases of course as the compressor go, starts from the lower it has to go to the higher, higher uh, temperature. So the temperature uh, will um, uh, and the temperature outlet temperature will increase. The, the, the compressor's outlet temperature will increase 
the quality of the vapor at the inlet to the evaporator increasing. So if you look up, this is 4.4 is the inlet to the evaporator. The quality, as we are moving, we know that the quality is zero here and one here. Zero means no vapor, one means uh, uh, all vapor. So the quality is increasing as we are uh, uh, going further down, down in, on the evaporator pressure. So wh what does that mean? That means that we are getting more gas phase or more vapor phase at the inlet of the evaporator. And as we know, the vapor, you cannot expand it further. If it, does, if it cannot be expanded, then it cannot absor absorb further heat on, from the evaporator surface. So it is just useless. We, we, we just pass through the evaporator and go to the compressor and then we have to compress it back to the higher pressure. We will get it. We are dropping that vapor at a lower pressure and not getting any benefit out of it and then compressing it back to the high pressure. So that will be a loss as we are going down to the so quality of the evap uh, vapor at the inlet to the evaporator increase as a result of that when we are lowering the evaporator pressure. Specific volume at the inlet to the compressor will increase. So if you look up the specific volume of, uh, of state 1, 1 dash and 1 double dash, the specific volume is increasing because we, are, we have more and more gas here. And so as a result, as a result, the compressor has to work higher <coughs> to compress it and send it back to the condenser pressure. So these are the losses which you will incur if you just try to modify your simple four component uh, 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 vapor compression system. So what to do? We want to introduce um, probably one more device. We want to, we want to, we, we are going to work with the two different ideas here. See, in, in a multi-pressure system, when we are, when we are, multi, uh, when we are modifying our simple system, to a multi-pressure system, then in, in that case, two or more low side pressure may be there. As you can see, we will, we will need uh, um, not just one evaporator pressure, we might need two evaporator pressure, one low 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 pressure evaporator, one high pressure evaporator, or one low temperature, one high, tempe uh, uh, high temperature evaporator. And often it will have uh, provi provision for flash gas removal and intercooling. So we are going to add one more device into our regular uh, vapor compression refrigeration system that is we call flash gas, uh, flash tank, we call it flash tank to remove flash gas. <coughs> what is the flash gas? Flash gas is the, is the gas or is the vapor that we get when, when your liquid, your saturated liquid from the outlet of the cond uh, condenser goes to the expansion wall and as, as it is traveling towards the evaporator in between some of the uh, some of the liquid the saturated liquid will convert to gas before it reaches to the evaporator inlet inlet so that is the flash gas and that gas will not do any benefit in producing the cooling it will simply go to the evaporator and then it has to pass through the evaporator and go to the compressor and it has to be compressed so that is what we are calling flash gas calling flash gas and it is undesirable we don't we want to somehow take it out before it goes to the um, uh, evaporator so that we don't have to recompress it again and spend our energy without getting any benefit from this flash gas. And intercooling, so now as the pressure has been increased between the evaporator and the condenser, so we are, we are going from a very, very low pressure to a very high pressure, so when we compress it, the, uh, and when we compress the vapor or when we compress the gas, its, <coughs> uh, its temperature rises. And as the temperature rises, the, the amount of energy required to compress the gas be becomes higher and higher and higher. So instead of compressing it in just one stage from you know, one low pressure to a very high pressure, we want to compress it to a middle range, then send it to a heat exchanger, cool it down and then compress it again. We will discuss it again in, in detail a little bit in the slides coming up. So flash gas removal, a, a, a saving in the power requirement of refrigeration system results if the flash gas that develops in the throttling process between the condenser and the evaporator is removed and recompressed before 
complete uh, complete expansion so we don't want this gas to go directly to the uh, evaporator and then go to the compressor and then compress it back again from a very low pressure to very high pressure instead we want to remove the flash gas in between send it to a middle compressor yeah the compressor and then compress it back to the condenser so that's the idea when saturated liquid expands when saturated exp expands through the to an expansion valve, the fraction of the vapor or flash gas progressively increases. The expansion process shown on the pressure enthalpy diagram in the figure below takes place from 1 to 2. The state point as the expansion proceeds moves into a region of a greater fraction of vapor. So as we are moving, the, the, uh, the fraction of vapor is increasing as we are going from condenser to the evaporator. <coughs> So this is uh, initially this is where the, our condenser is. So and this is our evaporator is. Point two is the evaporator. So if we go straight expand from one to two, then we are getting a lot of flash gas, which will do nothing. It will just uh, simply come to the evaporator, pass through this evaporator, and then we have to send it back to the compressor and compress it back to state one. So instead of doing that, what what is being suggested is to separate this flash gas up to 0.3 up to the middle range 0.3 and then remove the eva uh, vapor from here and send it to another compressor maybe which is located at 0.6 and the remaining liquid should go to the evaporator at 0.2 and this can be further expanded so here we are splitting at 0.3 we are splitting the saturated liquid and the saturated vapor so vapor will be sent to uh, um, either sent to a high uh, to a compressor here or it can be sent to a tank it can be collected into a tank so this is this is that flash tank so vapor from one to three it is coming here the, the uh, refrigerant will come in at point three at point three we install this flash tank so it will be coming here at the flash tank and then gas or the vapor will be going to 0.6 right here into a compressor and then and the liquid will go to the expansion valve to evaporate so the liquid will go this point state 4 is the saturated liquid it will go to the evaporator from here so at 0.3 we are splitting it we are splitting the, the gas and the liquid so gas will go from the flash tank it will go first into the flash tank and from flash tank to the compressor at 0.6 and the liquid will go to 0.4 then expansion valve and go to the evaporator so that's the idea that's this flash gas uh, flash tank or fra uh, will perform as a flash gas remover system so flash tank for removing gas during expansion process this is what we are doing so inspection of the expansion from 6 to 7 confirms that it is wasteful as you can see, six to seven. If, if we if we use just one compressor, then we have to again from this point we have to expand it down to seven because our compressor will be somewhere here, here with the evaporator. So it will be again you know wasteful. It, it will expand it, but it will, we will not get any uh, benefit out of it. In the first place, the refrigerant seven can do no refrigerating in these uh, in the second place work will be required to compress the vapor back to the pressure it had at, at six now now if we drop this uh, 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 vapor refrigerant to 0.7 we will be reducing the pressure and then we will be compressing back to the to state one so it's a wasteful why do that why not install a compressor right here which will compress it back there so that's the idea we are discussing why not perform part of expansion then separate the liquid from the vapor continue expanding the liquid and recompress the uh, vapor without further expansion the equipment to achieve this separation is called a flash tank the expansion from one to three takes place through a fruit valve which serves the further purpose of maintaining a constant level in the flash tank to recompress to recompress the vapor at six a compressor must be available with the suction pressure of six thus two compressors are needed in the system so now we are thinking of employing one compressor at 0.7 and one compressor at uh, 0.6 and have one compressor at 0.6 so instead of one compressor we are going to we'll go, we'll go we can go for two compressors and uh, the, the the flash 
because we want to separate the uh, uh, gas or the vapor from the liquid so we make it uh, the tank and this is the float wall float wall will maintain a certain level of the liquid in this uh, tank so that there will be continuous supply of liquid in this way otherwise you know maybe when you are getting the refrigerant here the uh, maybe um, uh, there will be not enough uh, refrigerant liquid refrigerant available for this expansion valve or for this evaporator so for that purpose we may maintain a level here with the, with the help of a floating wall so it will control how much li um, liquid can come here if the if the liquid refrigerant is too much then this uh, valve can close automatically with the help of this uh, ball wall and if it is less then it will keep it open and the liquid will keep coming and then the, the, the gas will evaporate from here and it will go to the uh, compressor to the high compressor <coughs> to separate the liquid from the gas the velocity of the gas which is moving up should be very small and that is what mentioned here it should be around one meter per second so normally vapor velocity is less than one meter per, per second will provide an adequate separation this velocity is found by dividing the volume for flow of the vapor by the surface area of the liquid the most efficient way to remove flash gas would be to separate the vapor continuously as it forms and to recompress it immediately no no practical means has yet been developed to accomplish that. So the best thing would be to just you know, keep separating the keep separating the flash gas from here and keep compressing it. We cannot do it. So that's why that is why we need this flash tank. So the, the uh, with the liquid, the gas can be also collected here and then sent to to the compressor to the high high pressure compressor. The <coughs> Now this uh, one is um, this is minimizing the compressor work. Now we are going from a very low pressure evaporator pressure to a very high pressure, which is uh, the condenser pressure. So should we go in one stage or in multiple stage, which will be the more beneficial? So this uh, minimizing the compressor work idea we have discussed in thermodynamics before. I have just copied it here, as you can see, the uh, the reversible compressor work can be given by V dP, V is the specific volume and dP is the pressure difference and kinetic and positional energies are negligible. So we can integrate this one to find out the uh, work required by the compressor. So the, this will be the isentropic PV to the power K constant work. We can in, uh, integrate here and then uh, this will be the answer. So if we use uh, this is the this this one isentropic and this one is polytropic and this one is the uh, isothermal work required and if you look at these three lines one of them is isentropic polytropic and isothermal and the area under the under these curves on the, on the left hand side these areas are, are the amount of energy uh, required by the compressor to compress it so as you can see the uh, isentropic work is the highest work required and polytropic is the second one, isothermal is the best one. So if we can compress the gas going from state 1 to the final state 2, from P1 to P2, isothermally, that is without increasing its temperature, you know, then we will have the lowest amount of energy required by the compressor. But as you know, we cannot do that. As we are compressing the gas, its temperature will rise. So we want to use it, um, uh, we want to mitigate this thing by intercooling by providing a, 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 a cooling a heat exchanger here so we will see that here is the idea multi-stage compression instead of a single stage compression we are doing a multi-stage compression with intercooling so in so for what we do this is our isothermal line that which we cannot achieve so we start from here we compress it to a middle pressure which we don't know right now dx and then we use a heat exchanger to cool it back to the same, temp same temperature here at the state one and then compress it again. So if we had compressed it straight from point 0.1 to point 0.2 then this green solid line would have been followed. But now as we are using a heat exchanger so it will go to middle stage then cooling again then compressing again. So we, this shaded area is the, is the amount of work that we have saved. 
how to achieve this, uh, uh, how to find out this pressure, the middle pressure. So for that, we have added the compressor work uh, uh, in uh, compressor one plus the compressor two work together. So these are the isentropic equation for the two. Uh, isentropic equation for the two, right here. Or the, rather the polytropic one. So actually the polytropic equation is performed. And then we take the different, find how to find the minimax. So take the differential uh, with respect to, with respect to the pressure and equate it to zero. Then we get this equation. Px is equal to P1, P2 raised to the power half. Or it will be Px upon P1 is equal to P2 over P1. To minimize compression work during two stage compression, the pressure ratio across each stage of the compressor must be the same. So, um, in this way, we can figure out what is the uh, what is the uh, p x value. If we know p one and p two, we can find out what is the metal pressure is. P1 is generally the inlet pressure, which we, which we, uh, evaporator pressure, which we normally know, and P2 is the condenser pressure, which is normally given. So, with the help of this equation, we can find out what is the inlet pressure. So, this is the same concept uh, again, uh, intercooling idea. The intercooling between the two stages of compression reduces the work of compression, uh, compression per kilogram of vapor in two stage compression of air, for example, and intercooling from 0.2 to 4 as shown on the pressure 0.2 to 0.4 intercooling okay 2 to 4 and uh, it will save some work this area representing the saving of the work now in, on figure 3b which is this figure shows how compression with intercooling appears on the pressure enthalpy diagram so compression with in intercooling go from state 1 to state 2 then intercooling then go to state 5 instead of going from 1 two to three straight here. So in that case, the um, work required by the compressor will be higher. Instead of doing that, we go this way. So then the work required will be lower. Process one, two, three, and four, five are on the lines of constant entropy. But process two, three falls on a flatter curve than process four, five between the same two pressure, therefore process 4, 5 shows a smaller increase in enthalpy which, is indicate, which indicates that the less work is required. Less work is required. So this enthalpy down here, from this enthalpy will be higher than point enthalpy of 0.3 will be higher than the enthalpy of 0.4. So we will get to be a lower enthalpy if we follow 1, 2, 4 and 5 instead of going 1, 2 and 3. So that's the idea. This is how we can save the work. So intercooling in a refrigeration system can be accomplished with a water-cooled heat exchanger. Uh, as in figure 4, this is figure 4A and this is 4B. So enthalpy balance required over the heat exchanger, then we have to do energy balance or enthalpy balance over the heat exchanger, this heat exchanger, or by using a refrigerant uh, by using refrigerant as in figure B, this one, enthalpy balance and mass balance required over the intercooler. Then we have to do a energy balance and mass balance over the intercooler. So normally this is used for any other system where we are compressing the air from one, let, let, let's say from uh, ambient condition of 1.1 bar to 20 bar and then using it in the industry for pneumatic devices, then we use this kind of uh, this kind of arrangement where we have a heat exchanger where cold water is served from the one pipe and the uh, hot air is coming from here and then it is getting cooler and then going to the high stage compression. But in case of our refrigerator system, we have a better thing to do that is we already had the flash tank installed. We already, we already know that we need a flash tank to remove the flash gas. So we are now going to use that flash tank for doing intercooling. So how we do that? We take the uh, lowest stage compressor vapor from here and then dip it inside the uh, flash tank uh, liquid. So that, that way the liquid will stay here 
and the vapor uh, the vapor which is coming from com uh, low, pri low, low stage compressor will bubble out from here at a colder temperature okay so that's the idea so that colder vapor will go into the high stage compressor So one of the uh, design issues in multi-stage compression is the selection of a suitable intermediate pressure for air compressor with intercooling to the initial temperature. The theoretical work input to the system will be minimum when the pressure ratios are equal for all the stages and I have shown you that calculation how to do it. You simply take, you simply take the differential of the uh, work equation and equate it to zero and then figure out what is the, what is the uh, pressure equation. This also results in equal compressor discharge temperature for, for all compressors. Thus, for a two-stage compressor with intercooling, the optimum intermediate pressure for minimum total power is Pi, that is uh, intermediate pressure, is equal to the suction side pressure and the discharge side pressure. The suction side is the lowest, lowest stage compressor suction and discharge is the high stage discharge of the compressor. So, Pi is the intercooler pressure. Ps is the suction pressure of the low stage compressor and Pd is the discharge pressure of the high stage compressor. Low stage compressor, high stage compressor. So there will be a suction, a discharge of this one, suction and discharge of this one. What we have Ps is the suction of the low stage one, this one, and Pd is the discharge of the high, temp high pressure one, this one. Pd is the discharge pressure of the high stage compressor. In flow basket. The above relation is found to hold good for ideal gases for refrigerant correction. Of course, we develop this equation, we develop all this work considering air, and we treat air as an ideal gas. But here we are dealing with refrigerant, so th we have to apply a correction for it. For refrigeration, uh, for, refri for refrigerant, correction factors to the above equations are suggested as the development of the equation does not consider the additional refrigerant compressed by the high stage compressor. So we have a comp complexity here. It is not just the whatever coming out of this uh, low compressor, uh, low stage compressor is going into this high stage compressor. We have additional amount of vapor which is coming from here, which we have a you know, fl flash gas removal or the, the flash tank already has it. Okay. So that is why we have to apply a correction. In this scenario, whatever is coming out from this low stage compressor is going into the high stage compressor. But in our refrigerant situation, it is not the case. Whatever is coming from the low stage compressor that is going to the high stage compressor plus whatever gas we have separated in the flash tank. So it is more than that. So we have to apply, an, apply a correction. But it does provide an approximate guideline for the optimal intermediate pressure. For refrigerant correction factor to the above equations are required, so the, the equation for the refrigerant will be Pi is equal to Pe Pc multiplied by Tc, uh, Tc, Tc upon Te, where E stands for the evaporator and C for the condenser, and I is the intermediate pressure. Okay, so with this, using this equation, we can calculate what is the uh, intermediate pressure for, for our refrigerant system. But most of the time in numerical, we, you will see that we, have, we will be using this equation because this is rather easier to use than this one. So now we will, we will be considering one by one different types of modification that we can do in our simple vapor compression system. So, so one situation will be to, uh, to, to, to evaporator with single compressor like this one here, we have two, we have whatever com coming from the condenser is split into two portion uh, uh, that goes into two evaporator and we have only one compressor to compress back to the condenser and of course we have to use a pressure reducing valve, PRB for that one, for this one. So some, uh, some applications require refrigerant at more than one temperature as I said the example of the uh, dairy industry for the ice cream uh, and the gold mill. If 
five degree or minus ten degree centigrade separate throttling valve and and uh, separate compressor for each evaporator operating at different temperatures. System will be bulky and un, uh, uneconomical. So instead of doing that, more practical and economical approach is to uh, route all exit streams from the evaporator to a single single compressor. A pressure reducing valve PRV is used to reduce the intermediate pressure to the compressor suction pressure. So we are using uh, a PRV to, because of course this will be at a higher pressure and this will be a further lower pressure here. As you can see, this is the outlet of the condenser. So as it reaches 0.4, the pressure, the, the first evaporator is working at this pressure, which is at a higher pressure. So, and then we have compressor only at a stage one here at state one here so we have to drop this high pressure vapor to this one so to so reduce this pressure to pressure six or to pressure one we have to use a pressure reducing wall that's here and then the remaining refrigerant will go to state seven right here to this through the expansion wall and it will go to the low, low at lower stage evaporator and evaporate produce some cooling effect here and then it will come to state one and then both of these from from first evaporator and the second evaporator will be compressed back to the condenser condition so the mass balance the the, the mass flow rates are different in different parts of the cycle hence both enthalpy and mass balance must be satisfied if the pr is isenthalpic then h5 should be equal to h6 if we are considering to be an isenthalpic one then H5 should be equal to H6. It will be, we are just dropping the pressure but not changing anything else. But it's, it is a irreversible process so it is not isentropic so it, but it is we are not adding any heat or anything to it so it is we call it that is isenthalpic process. So H5 will be equal to H6. The mass balance if we do around uh, uh, this uh, PRV pressure reducing wall. So P M6 plus M8, M6 is what is coming out from this line here and M8 which is coming out from this line here. So initially 6 and 8 both are split it from 0.3 and it is going to 0.1 which is leading to compressor. So M6, M.6 mass flow rate from 6 plus mass flow rate M.8 should be equal to the mass flow rate M.1 to the inlet of the compressor. That's the mass balance for the cycle. Energy balance after PRV or the inlet of the compressor. So we are doing energy balance across this uh, PRV. So what is flowing into the the um, uh, what is flowing into the PRV and what is leaving the PRV. <coughs> Excuse me. Sir. What is flowing into the uh, PRV is M dot six and H six. So now this is this this leaving the PRV sorry six and eight are are here and one is on there so we are doing um, we are doing energy balance at point here so m m dot six h six plus m dot eight h eight what is coming into at point this here and then it should be equal to what is leaving from here which is m dot one h one energy balance after PRV or inlet of the compressor. So we are doing energy balance after PRV at this point. So what is flowing in at this point are M dot 8 and M dot 6 multiplied by their respective enthalpy and what is leaving this point is M dot 1 multiplied by its enthalpy. M dot 1 multiplied by its enthalpy. So that's the energy balance at point after PRV at a point after PRV and COP of the total system will be equal to the cooling produced in the low pressure uh, evaporator or QL1 and and Q dot L2 so L1 and L2 divided by only one compressor work divided by the one compressor work so M dot 8 H8 minus H7, H8 minus H7 is the refrigerating effect produced by this low temperature evaporator plus M.5, M.5 
into H5 minus H4 will be the refrigeration produced by this um, evaporator divided by the work required by the compressor which is m dot h2 minus h1 m dot h2 minus h1 and m dot 5 is equal to m dot 6 so if you can figure out because we will be able to find out properties of 5 easily as compared to 6 so m dot 5 will be equal to m dot 6 m dot 5 is on saturated vapor line so that's the energy balance for a two evaporator with single compressor system. We'll be, we have to do the similar energy balance and mass balance for other types of combination. So this is an example of uh, this is an example for a two evaporator one compressor system. We'll be discussing it in the next lecture, inshallah.